there used to be a time when Hasbro made some pretty amazing blasters with indexing clips. Like that, for example. And then for the longest time, they kind of just forgot how to make them. And then they remembered, and we wish they'd forgot. You need to get yourself sorted out, Hasbro, or we're gonna have a ruckus. What did you say, Joe? I said Hasbro needs to get them sorted out or we're gonna have a ruckus. I wish Hasbro would give us a new index clip blaster capable of firing elite darts. Ah, don't look at me. Maybe it's like Windows that just updates sometimes. Try pressing this button. <laughs> Well, that was easy. Suppose I might as well unbox it now. Yeah, the Nerf Ruckus. ICS-8. What does that stand for? International Castle Staple. I would guess internal clip system. And the 8 represents the fact there are 8 darts which can fit in this rather funky looking banana clip internal thing. Well, this guy looks pretty happy with it. Now, as you guys know, I love the idea of front loaders. Blasters that you can run into battle with and just keep on reloading without having to carry around spare mags. So I do quite like the idea of this. Eight dart indexing clip, and that'll be this. Easy front loading. Hasbro, you've been listening. Oh, what you lovely. Pump action blasting. Wonder if it's Sunfire. Guards go in there. <laughs> That's how it works, like that. Load and fire fast with the indexing clip and pump action blasting. Chargement, tir, air, rapide, grasse, air, chargeur, indexage, et du maximisé, air, pompe. Schnell laden und feuern mit dem pump action blasting mit slide magazine. That's some severely lazy translation right there. Okay, well, I'm interested in this. I suppose you best open it. Bibbidi, bobbidi, scissors. It's magic! I'm just kind of noticing how little packaging there is nowadays on Hasbro Blasters. The cynics might suggest they're just saving money, but I like to think they're saving the planet. This looks really interesting. Pump. Oh, okay, so you prime, and then it's when you push forwards that the indexing clip actually advances. This feels very, very streamlined. Okay, so it might not be quite as streamlined as a kind of retaliator or recon style blaster, but even so, it does feel very streamlined. It's also quite compact. It's got this rather nice tiger stripe camo on it, which is cool. Okay, so I have just clocked something about this blaster. There are zero attachment points on this blaster, not one. No barrel attachment, no stock attachment, and also no tactical rails. Wouldn't have hurt to put a tactical rail like there, but anyway. Oh, this is kind of funky though. It says elite, kind of like an embossed sort of way right there. I like that. You've got to be careful to prime it all the way back and then all the way forwards. And then the clip advances. And then you just push it down again. You can push it both ways, seems simple enough. I really like the idea of nerfing with this actually. We do however have a sling attachment point on the handle. So inside the box we have the blaster. And probably in here somewhere we'll find some darts. There we go, eight darts. Ruckus, that's a butch sounding blaster, butch. Like, do any of you guys remember stories about this guy called Bronson? He was like a really tough English guy. At least I'm fairly certain he was a super tough English guy. Fairly certain he was English. Stick all these in here. And we are now fully loaded. Might be about time to fire at the deploy. You actually have to aim it more upwards than you would have otherwise thought. There we go. If I'm actually looking along the blaster, it's okay, but just holding it like that, for some reason, it kind of made me want to aim downwards. Genius. And we're all out of ammo. My next question is, how easy is it to actually load this blaster back up? So I'm just gonna scavenge from the floor. I'm scavenging, I'm th throwing these back in the clip here. There we go, back in the clip, in we go. So actually, this seems like it's quite easy to load up again. Get your eye protection on, Tang. Put you back up there. So actually, this seems like it fires pretty well. I think this would be ideal for late stage humans versus zombies. It's a larger blaster than a front loader with a rotating barrel, but actually it's not too bad. Let's try slam firing. Okay, well, slam firing isn't listed on the box as one of the features, but it does slam fire. This, to me, is an incredibly interesting blaster. It's got the slam fire functionality, it's fairly slimline, and I quite like the way the clip works. Now, the one foreseeable problem I can see with this with regard to nerfing is remembering which part of the mag is loaded and which part's not loaded. With all of that being said, how about we try something new and get a summary from my face? Hey there! This my face! And I've got a few things to say about this blaster. I actually think it looks rather funky. Plus you can go like that, which is pretty cool. You know what it reminds me of? Who's played Goldeneye? Do you remember the club from Goldeneye? 
looked like and never hit anything. But to be fair, it reminds me a little bit of that, which is actually kind of cool in a retro sort of way. I love the fact that it's got slam fire as well, despite the fact it didn't say anything about that on the box. I actually think it's kind of cool that Hasbro have done that. They've just like, yeah, we've got slam fire too, but we're so cool, we haven't got to mention that. Hasbro, this is an unusual boxing, because I quite like this. This, frankly, does exactly what it says in the tin, because it is an easy front-loading blaster. I did have some concerns earlier about loading this blaster when the mag was kind of all the way in, so how to get to these bits here, but actually they're pretty easy to get to as well. To be honest, this kind of orange bit here right at the end is a little bit redundant, and you could shave that off if you wanted to insert darts a little bit more easily. It's also interesting to note that when you're loading the blaster, you can push this up and down again, and you haven't got to go all the way. It's actually quite, it's actually quite fun to do, to be honest. This isn't why I bought the blaster, but... <laughs> oh, thank you, Hasbro. Jablonski, if you were a part of this... I also kind of like the fact that if you do have a fully loaded clip, then you know when you're running out of ammo, the higher this goes, if that makes sense. If you have a look at the back right here, you can actually see which of these are loaded and which aren't, which is another plus for a front loader like me. So in terms of tactics and stuff, there are no attachment points like at all and come to think of it they would have struggled to put any on the top of the blaster because this goes up i guess you could have put one up here possibly we could have had some attachment rails on the sides there a nice stock at the back maybe and so your only option if you like tactics are kind of to mount it on a sling somewhere i still love how it looks like a clock i got a face would you want this as your only blaster now i like front loaders which i can use as my only blaster a prime example of that would be the artemis Okay, so it's not technically a front loader, but you can just load up in there, kind of leave this open and keep loading up, and you've kind of got a front loader. You can just keep on throwing in the ammo. All front loaders like this wonderfully minimise Lawbringer right here. To be honest, I like how you can relatively easily tell how much ammo you've got just by glancing down. You haven't got to move the blast around to the front to have a look. That's nice. I don't know, maybe you could write little kind of numbers on here to remind you how many darts you've got left, or I guess over time you've kind of learned that anyway. So other blasters in Nerf's current line that I would say this competes with are probably the Disruptor, whatever that 8-shot Doomlands one was, because that was only 8 shots. I would say that this also competes in a way with the Alpha Trooper or Delta Trooper or Trooper Tukin or whatever it's called. In its minimised form, they are actually really, really similar, except that... You can't front load and top up an Alpha Toucan Trooper thing, whatever it is. You can top up this and reload it quickly. Well, you can reload it quickly for a front loader, but you know, you can't reload another mag into it. So I'd say you probably wouldn't want to use this as a primary. It's probably going to take the role of more of a secondary. Do you know what's actually gutting is that you can't hold two of these in like Goldeneye style? I'm sorry, it just reminds me of Goldeneye so much. Look at it! Another thing that did take a little bit of getting used to was aiming it, because the higher up this goes, I guess you're inclined to try and look over it and point your blaster downwards, or at least I was. But then eventually I got used to it and killed the deploy. If you're part way through loading, it's a little bit more difficult to load darts in, but but it's still doable. In the same way, with a traditional revolving front load, you need to remember to kind of load your darts in and then prime it and then sort of leave a space. You need to load a space backwards, if you will, if you haven't primed the blaster yet. You've got to do this here too. So in other words, if your blaster's unprimed, you can't just go ahead and load a dart right where it's going to be shooting from. You've got to load it one dart before. In terms of how it was firing different darts, it was definitely firing the newer darts better. As in the brand new Elite darts it came with. The old Zed tips, I was also trying to fire from it. Mm, not so much. But that's probably just because the foam's degraded over time. Accu folks are just fine. And round tip egg shots are just fine too. Because the magazine is a little bit far forward, there's a little bit of strain when I'm holding it. That's just kind of what happens when you hold a Nerf blaster. I feel it's a fun piece of kit especially doing that. I like how it looks, I like how it fires. That's pretty much it really. What's this? There's a little, there's a little box on the box. It's Boxception. What have we got here then? And inside this box we have, oh nothing. I was kind of hoping it was a little trinket or some kind of stuff, but anyway. So what I find interesting recently is the way Hasbro are moving back towards indexing magazines. First of all, there was the Battle Scout. Then we have the Mega Iraqi Strike Thunderhawk. Now the Ruckus. And coming out next year, there's that drill thing, which also looks like it's going to be an indexed mag blaster or an indexed clip blaster, whatever we're going to say. So my question is, are these cheaper to manufacture? Do they just kind of think it's about time they got back to stuff like this? I have no idea, but it's an interesting thing to notice and think about. To conclude, this is easy to use, easy to prime. 
quite excited to use this in a Nerf war actually and see how it goes. I'm not going to get a chance because Grimop Nerf isn't on in January. We're too busy, it's Joel at number one's birthday. And so the first chance I'm going to get to try this out is probably in February. Guess I just go and take on Mr. Jolt in a random Nerf war. If you guys want to see that, I also kind of like this elite thing here where it's kind of like, it's not embossed, it's the opposite of embossed, whatever that is. Embossed, unbossed, who knows. Anyway, for £20 from Smith's, is this a decent blaster? To be fair, you can get cheaper blasters that do the same thing, but this is completely unique. And if you're a cosmetic model, you can probably make some things that look pretty cool out of this. So please comment down below what you think of this kind of style of unboxing. Make sure you like, subscribe, notifications bell, all that kind of stuff. Please go and check out the songs I've done recently. Enjoy singing along to them at your local Nerf Wars. Also go and watch the interview I did with Broke Nerfing. I really like his channel, by the way. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. This is Just a Jolt, signing off.